The predators I catch come in all shapes, all sizes, and all ages. Like this creep pushing 60. But Charles Lawrence isn't looking to hook up with a 13-year-old girl. He's looking for a boy. He says, I live alone. OK, I'm alone. Lawrence doesn't know it, but he's the latest guy I've caught in our all-new investigative series, Hanson vs. Predator. We have to have just at least one more communication. We're working with the cooperation of Fairfield, Connecticut Police and Tetrid Corps, an online predator watchdog group. So that's it. In our sting house, we've hidden more than a dozen cameras. We've even placed a microphone underneath a leaf. Lawrence is well-educated and apparently very well off. He lives in Fairfield, a jewel of Connecticut's Gold Coast. He's an accountant. He works as a commercial real estate broker. And get this, he lives only 2,000 feet away from our sting house, a quarter mile he probably wishes he never traveled. Hopefully Lori can get this guy back on the feed. I don't care what she says. Lori from Tetrid is texting Lawrence as our on-site decoy looks on. On social media, Lawrence calls himself an 8 by 6 guy. The decoy clearly tells Lawrence his age. How old are you? Swear you won't report me? Of course not. 13. But when the decoy reveals his supposed age, Lawrence immediately follows up with what seems to be either concern or some unrecognized intuition. Are you a cop or involved in law enforcement? LOL. Really? Gotta be careful. Yeah, man, I get it. The conversation quickly becomes sexually charged. I had sex with my ex-girlfriend, nothing with a guy. Gotcha. But you like guys better now? Never tried it, but being with my girlfriend was really awkward. Maybe you need a good teacher. Yeah, you know one? You're talking to him, LOL. School is in session. Then the lesson turns even naughtier as Lawrence talks to our decoy about hardcore gay porn. Do you watch porn? Yeah. What do you like to watch? Yeah, what do you like? Mostly gay porn and some bi porn. But the exchange gets so graphic, we can't reveal the remaining text. Finally, Lawrence arrives, and the sting is on. How you doing? Good. Good. Come in. All the lights on. I know, it's getting dark out. It's supposed to rain, it's hurricane. You want something to eat? I know. You want to, you can take a seat, well, you want a drink? You want some water? Yeah, great. Want water? Yeah. Yeah. How's your day been so far? Good, good. Yeah. There you go. Want some water, dog. So did you bring anything? Oh, I have in the car. You have in the car? But before he can retrieve something from his car, Lawrence is about to get a big surprise. No, Chris. And if he thinks he's in for a shock, so am I. What are you doing here? Something strikes me. It looks familiar and what cops say they found in his car that will turn your stomach. Charles Lawrence is a well-to-do real estate broker in the Connecticut suburbs. How you doing? Good. Good. Just come in. He believes he's come to this house to meet a 13-year-old boy after exchanging salacious text messages like these. Just got out of the shower. How was your shower? About to do the same. Hot and wet, LOL. And hopefully soapy, LOL. But for this agent, there is no open house, and his best sales pitch is about to strike out. I've caught more than 300 predators in the last decade, and some of them even know me from TV. No, Chris, what are you doing? But this is the first time I've caught anyone who I know. The second Charles Lawrence walked in the door, I thought, I swear I know this guy from somewhere. Now I'm watching from the monitor in the other room as he walks in, and something strikes me. He looks familiar, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And it dawns on me that this is a fellow I had met on the commuter train years ago. Knew his name, he was in real estate, and here he is in our kitchen trying to hook up with a 13-year-old boy. When Lawrence sees me, he bolts, gripped in sheer panic. What are you doing here? Chris, please. I know, but you have to explain this to me. Come here, man. He runs out the door. Now the man I know from the train is about to be derailed. 
The Fairfield cops nab him in the driveway. They slap the cuffs on him and take him into the garage. Do you have any weapons? No. Anything that's gonna hurt us? No. A needle? No. He's put into the back seat of an unmarked car and taken to police headquarters. At the station, he tries to hide his face with a hoodie, but there's no escape from our cameras. The Fairfield police chief gave us rare access in the back rooms of the station, so you can see the booking process up close. Anything you say or statements you make may be used against you. Lawrence empties his pockets and cops frisk him. They take his mugshot, he's fingerprinted, and he gives his consent to allow cops to search his SUV. Want me to, uh, I'll do this side? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Cops find cigarettes, condoms, and a gay porn video called Seattle Bareback Boys. Lawrence is taken into the interrogation room. He signs away his right to remain silent. You know, I mean, Chris Hansen is actually, I know him, he's a friend of mine. I commuted on the train for years. And that's more of an embarrassment than anything. I've seen Chris's show before, so I... <laughs> I understand you've seen Chris's show before. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is this is the way this is played out. No, Chris... When you meet Chris Hansen on the kitchen, there's no way. Is it your understanding you were going there to see and talk to a 13-year-old? No. No, okay. Well, that's kind of why... That's, that's kind of my intention at all. I would oh. never do that. But the detective tells him he had to know he was doing something wrong. There would be no reason for you to ask this then. Right. Are you a cop or involved in law enforcement? They respond back, laugh out loud, really? Mm -hmm. And you write back, got to be careful. Right. I would never they write back, yeah, man, I get it. Mm -hmm. So the problem you're going to have with your explanation is if you thought legitimately that the person was 18 yeah. and you thought that you read the number 18, at that point, from what you just said, in your mind, you're really alleviated of any concerns about dealing with a minor or, or anything no, like that. Not true, because, again, and, people could say they're 18, and they're not. But you didn't, you didn't say that. You just asked, after finding out, after the age was written, which was 13, you're claiming 18. Right, after that well, number was written, yeah. you move forward with some other back and forth, which I can read. I'm looking, I'm looking yeah. to get away from that. Okay. But then you clearly write. But I do Are you law enforcement or a cop? I do that with everybody because I don't, I, I don't, I don't get, understand I don't why be in, be in trouble with, any, with anybody. I don't understand why you would write that or be concerned about that if, if in fact you thought you read the number eighteen. Thirteen. I would have shut it right down. I would have blocked him right then and there. Charles Lawrence is old enough to be this kid's grandfather, yet he exchanged some raunchy text messages offering to teach the young boy about sex. I had sex with my ex-girlfriend. Nothing with a guy. Gotcha. Do you like guys better now? Never tried it, but being with my girlfriend was really awkward. Maybe you need a good teacher. Yeah, you know one? You're talking to him, LOL. School is in session. And you won't believe his explanation for trying to hook up with a 13-year-old. He blames it all on his eyesight. I thought, he told, you, I thought he told me he was 18. OK. OK, and so you, you thought you were well, being an 18-year-old. My eye got scratched, so I can't wear my contacts, so I'm, we I'm wearing these glasses. And I was downstairs you know, having a cup of coffee, and my glasses were upstairs. And I'm, I'm, he's look, you know, I'm looking. I, I thought he said 18. I swear to God, I would never, ever in my entire life meet a 13 year old. That, that I, I could say to my own self, it's disgusting. Okay. All right. That's okay. not, you know, so consenting adults is a different story. I can show you that I was at my ophthalmologist yesterday, an eye doctor, that I have a scratch on my eye as to why I'm wearing these glasses and why I didn't see that correctly. I can show you. I, thought, I can show you if you want to see. It says 13. I can't even read that. Okay. But I, I thought it said 18. It says 13. Okay. And that's fine. Some people, they say they're 18 and they're not. The detective's not buying it and explains the charges. The charges are um, criminal attempt to commit risk of injury to a minor, criminal attempt to commit sexual assault in the second degree, and enticing a minor. The bail is set at $75,000. Lawrence decides not to fight the charges. He pleads guilty. When Crime Watch Daily went to his sentencing at the Fairfield County Court, Lawrence entered through the employee entrance in order to avoid our cameras. Inside, he reportedly told the judge, I am not a pedophile. I use poor judgment, but I have never seen, used, or downloaded child pornography in my life. 
He got eight years suspended after serving two years in prison, and he has to register as a sex offender when he's released. That tough sentence is just fine with Fairfield Police Chief Gary McNamara, who is working hard to keep predators out of his city. That's a pretty stiff sentence for a first-time offender. Well, yeah, well, some would say it's not stiff enough, Chris. Some would say it's not stiff enough, but certainly that, that should send the message out that uh, we all know what the intent was, what the reason for, for the visit was, and, uh, and he's held accountable for that. Now, Chris. We got another predator off the streets. It's still hard to believe it's an acquaintance of mine from the commuter train. Charles Lawrence is now taking a one-way ride to prison.